Hello. Hey, hi everyone. I hope you are doing good. So welcome to my YouTube channel and my name is Vishal and I'm a solution architect with over 10 plus years of experience in data engineering. I'm going to start a new a video series of the Snowflake where I will be talking about Snowflake architecture, how we are going to discuss up, like how we are going to ingest the data, how we are going to load and everything from the starting till the end so that you will be not only just the interview ready, but with your job ready. Throughout my career, I have had the privilege of training or like trained over 1000 individuals on platform like Snowflake, SQL and Matillion. In this course, we will take a deep dive into the Snowflake, exploring its unique features, capabilities and best practices. So either you are a complete beginner or looking to enhance your existing knowledge, this series is definitely going to help you. Okay, so watch this series till the end. By the end of the uh, end of this course, you will be confident enough in navigating Snowflake and Snowflake related job opportunities. Okay, so in this, we are going to talk about the Snowflake introduction in architecture, where basically I will be covering uh, these uh, like these are the chapters, and in the chapters we will be talking about the every uh, like these subtopics. So what? is Snowflake, why Snowflake, architectures, three layers, query execution flow, then we have a caching and the, how it works. Next is we have account additions and billing. So how you will be creating a Snowflake account, what are the kind of a pricing we have available in uh, like how basically Snowflake uh, charge you, like it's a basically a stories on the compute. Then the very important, which is going to be virtual warehouse. If you are already working in SQL and PLSQL or ETL, and if you're planning to start your Stoneflake journey, and let's suppose that you have cl close to eight plus years of experience, this virtual warehouse, you need to understand because this is where you're going to control not only just your performance, but your cost also. So how you will be creating it? What would be the ideal size of the warehouse we should uh, we should keep uh, for our load? What, how we are going to do the multi-cluster? How we are going to enable like the going to scale up or scale out? What are the type of scaling policies? Everything we will be learning in this virtual warehouse topic. Next, we will be like understanding everything from a developer, right? Like a creating database, creating schema, creating tables. What are the kind of a data types we have? And is there any limitations other than like uh, as comparatively the on-premises database like SQL Server or Oracle? Then the next thing, once we will be having a good understanding of the tables, data type views, then we will be ingesting the data. So for data ingestion, what are the other topics we need to know? we will be having a good understanding, like we will be taking a deep dive of a file format, the type of stages, which stage we're gonna use and when, and any kind of a limitation, the pricing associated with it, the huge cases, then the Snow SQL. If there are some uh, files in your local machines, which is having, let's suppose like a one GB, 500 MB and all, and suppose you wanted to upload an entire folder, how are you gonna do it? That's we're going to like learn into the snow SQL, how we are going to configure it, put and get commands and copy into commands. Okay. Next, we're not just going to limit uh, in uh, like ourselves in this series to the structure data, but we will be exploring the semi structure data like a JSON, XML, Parquet also. Like if any one of you is going to have some use cases, you feel free to like uh, drop into the comments and we will be exploring the Parquet data as well. In the next, we're going to have a data recovery steps, which is very important features a very unique feature. I'll say very like a, which uh, basically widely used and widely loved by the audience. That is a time travel. Okay. If I have mistakenly deleted or dropped my database, how would I drop it? How would I basically recover that data? If I have mistakenly updated my millions of record and now client is expecting the same record, but in the source, we don't have that data. How would I recover that? So for it, we will now have a time travel. And then there is another zero copy clone. This is very important features, which we will be learning. Now, what if the data is in the data lake, like a AWS, Azure, or a GCP, and we wanted to get the data from there, how we're going to load that data from there. So for it, we're going to integrate our Snowflake with AWS and Azure. I mean, I will be covering uh, like on the GCP as well. I will be trying like focusing. I will be trying to uh, create a videos on all three cloud. So some of you, if you are going to work AWS, Azure and GCP, you will be having a good confidence and good idea about it. 
next we're going to uh, cover about the snow pipe which is going to help you to continuous batch load the data without manual intervention next the snowflake stream task and we're going to have a continuous data integration probably we're going to cover this scd like a, a scd type 1 or type 2 implementation next in the advanced topic we're going to have a data encryption data masking micro partition and clustering in the details which is going to be again a very important features if you are more than eight plus years eight plus years of experience you need to understand that how the data basically gets stored into the snowflake next we're going to have a snowflake from admin i where we can talk about the role based access control the data migration to snowflake data sharing cost and the performance optimization what are the uses of account users and information schema what are the important important views we have in these two in the, these two schema then resource monitoring how we're going to create a dashboards into the snowflake okay so i will be like covering an end-to-end -end project where we will be getting a data from let's say aws data lake going to clean that going to create some views and those view we're going to use it for reporting but only into the snowflake i'm not going to use any third party tool for this dashboard uh, like uh, not going to use any power bi tableau or click we will be just creating those dashboard into the snowflake and then in the last we will be focusing more which you would be basically like uh, going to watch this course means end-to-end -end projects. We're going to connect the Snowflake with Power BI, Matelian. I will be importing all my premises data, some of the APIs data through this Matelian into the Snowflake, then connecting to Power BI or Tableau, then create an end-to-end -end data engineering solutions. Okay, so this is all which we are going to cover in this. Now, let's come to the Snowflake introduction. Earlier, from like uh, the companies in the early days of data management organization primarily focusing on the traditional databases okay so those traditional databases like they were focusing on to store the data to manage the data but that data was basically relatively small volume and the structured data but as the like uh, basically uh, in the in this era in this modern era like where the internet is everywhere and data is the new oil now data is rapidly increasing and data is not only just into the structure format but it is coming into the semi structure format so organizations started facing challenges such as data silos where information was trapped into different system and it was very difficult to gain a holistic view of their operations this led the development of the data warehouses where we're going to keep the data into a central repository and to pull the data from a heterogeneous sources those heterogeneous sources be it operational databases crm systems or external data feeds so data warehouse allow organization to consolidate data in like to put the data into a single uh, repository or into a single place and then organization were using that data for their analytics purpose and like not only just for analytics or analysis they were using for reporting and decision making but those on premises also were having few challenges like a traditional data warehouses were also having some challenges like an infrastructure as a services and as the data was rapidly increasing and we were having a limited storage capacity some high to high cost like which was required for like uh, managing the data management and data, like uh, some cost basically like uh, maintenance updates and other things so there was some challenges over there and there was uh, no scalability failover replication was a challenge data security was a challenges so these were the couple of main challenges i'm not going to take a deep dive because this is going to be more focused into the snowflake so i will be keeping aside however if any one of you want to keep these points into the detail like want me to explain these points into details you can simply write an email to me i will be dropping my email address into the description and then you can reach out to me now all the challenges of the traditional data warehouses it basically helped the rise of the cloud data warehouse so as the volume of the data continued to grow and so like as the volume of data continued to grow so the complexity and the cost associated with the maintaining on-premises data warehouses now everyone organization begin to seek solution which is going to offer them greater flexibility scalability and lower maintenance cost that's where the cloud data warehouse came in the picture those cloud data warehouse like snowflake redshift google bigquery they 
came into the pictures and then industries started shifting from on-premises to these cloud. These platforms allow organization to store and process the vast amount of data without need of heavy infrastructure investment. That means it is just going to be a software as a services. You just need to set up your account, create your account, and then everything will be taken care of by these cloud data warehouses. Now, then the Snowflake introduction. Okay, if we talk about the Snowflake, I'm not going to talk about again the other Redshift, BigQuery, and Databricks because this is going to be Snowflake focus. So, as for the documentation, and not just the documentation, the Snowflake is basically a true SaaS offering. That means I do not have to install any software. I do not install. I don't have to install any software or hardware. No need to configure anything. No need to manage anything. I am just going to hit the URL, going to create my account, and that's it. Okay. Now, some of you. I have basically when I was like got into the traction with a couple of folks who were not aware of the Snowflake fully, they say I think that Snowflake is kind of a cloud which basically which is like a cloud as AWS Azure or GCP. No. Snowflake does not provide the services like AWS Azure or GCP. Snowflake basically under the hood use these cloud. Snowflake is going to use AWS Azure or GCP. You are going to get, you are going to run completely on these public cloud. You cannot run on the private cloud, okay, or on premises or a hosted cloud. It will be totally and totally supported on a public cloud infrastructure. And then Snowflake will be completely handling all the ongoing maintenance, the upgrades, the performance tuning, everything will be handled by the Snowflake. Okay, so Snowflake is not any kind of a package software which is just can be installed and can be used by everyone. Now, again, talking about the architecture of it, or like not, it's definitely not an architecture, basically talking about the flow, this Snowflake, here you can see, it's basically, we are going to use a cloud under the hood. So I'm going to host my Snowflake in any of this cloud. When I'm going to install, like when I'm going to create my account on Snow, like I will be just going to snowflake.com, there it will be asking which uh, cloud you wanted to choose, either Azure, AWS, or GCP. I'll simply choose that, and then I am I am ready for that. I just need to choose my cloud. I just need to choose my additions. So which version, like I, I, I either I am to add standard, enterprise, or business critical. Based on that, my uh, cost will be calculated. For this training, we're going to focus on enterprise edition and the AWS. Why? Because when Snowflake was launched in 2012, it was initially launched on the AWS. And not only this is the reason, main reason is whenever Snowflake launch any new features or any new services, initially they launch on the Snowflake, which is hosted on AWS and that to like a US specific reason. Now, the Snowflake you can take the data from these uh, OLTP, ERP system, third party, and uh, weblog, IoT through any ETL or ELT applications or even a streaming like a Kafka. You can dump the data into the Snowflake, which can be used further by the data consumers such as uh, data analytics, data engineers, ad hoc analytics, data monetization, and even for the data scientists. So Snowflake in like if I have to just concise, so Snowflake is a true SaaS offering which is single platform for any kind of a, your data workload. That means you can use either for your data warehousing, your data exchange, data engineering, data lake, data science and data applications. And that comes with unlimited performance and scalability. If I have a requirement to install my petabytes of data, Snowflake will easily handle that. You do not need to worry about that, that, hey, oh, what if I'm just going to install, like uh, going to just petabyte of data today, will it be like throwing an error that, okay, I don't have any space or do I need to additionally, do I need to keep some settings to, hey, no, no, I'm just going to keep some petabyte of data. You need to be ready for it, handle it. No, nothing you need to do. It's very easy to use. You are just going to write your like, going to configure it. No need for the storage configuration, but for the computation, which is going to give you a query performance there. Yes, we will be making some like we will be uh, doing some steps, but that is also very easy. It's kind of a child of 
to set up the cluster but it is very difficult to understand that in which scenario I'm going to use which size of the virtual warehouse that we will be learning or we will be exploring in this playlist. Okay, now the Snowflake advantage over on-premises uh, so far you have understood, which is basically cloud native advantage, true SaaS. It gives you a unlimited scalability of uh, like a near G G uh, downtime and uh, seamless collaboration for data sharing, flexible charges. So it's just not going to be like, uh, I'm not using any Snowflake, then I would be still uh, paying it. No, I just only need to pay when I'm going to use it. Next is the time travel and field safe, which is going to be very good features. And also we have a zero copy clone. So this is how we're going to launch our Snowflake and uh, I will be choosing AWS GCP and Azure and this image is definitely old. So now Snowflake supported by other reason also. So do not just rely on that image. Uh, image okay. Next is we have uh, what makes Snowflake data warehouse unique. Okay. Every single topic, whatever is listed in this slide, we're going to have a separate, separate video discussion for this. And everything we are going to practically focus. It is not just going to be a theory because I'm sure that you would you have gone through a lot of documentation, a lot of books, but still not able to understand few topics. Don't worry, I'm here. I'll try to explain every single topic in in very easy language and will try to relate with some real-time examples so that you will be easily able to understand that. Sounds good. Now, the first one is we have a paper users. That means I do not need to use, I do not need to pay for every time when I'm just going to log into the Snowflake. If I'm not running anything, I won't be paying any compute cost. Okay. If I'm just analyzing my query and my warehouse is sleeping, I won't be paying anything. But yes, for the storage cost, I will be paying. And what would be the pricing? We will be having, we will be discussing into the next video. Next we have, we're going to have an optimized store. Okay, where we have a columnar DB, large block size. So here the data gets stored into the columnar format and that too is the compressed. Snowflake automatically compress the data, store the data into the columnar format into the small, small micro partitions. Next, we have a caching, which is very important, not only just for the performance optimization, but for the cost optimization also how it works, what are the kind of a settings you need to do, when it is going to be disabled and how I'll get to know with like my data is coming from which cache, everything, everything will be covered. I'm not going to repeat that everything will be covered. You just take it like for understood that, okay, by end of this tutorial, by uh, like after uh, completing this 20 to 30 videos, you will be having every single thing in your mind. Next is the cloning. Then we have a replication, data sharing, serverless time travel fees uh, and fail safe native support for semi -star. I mentioned in this this playlist we are not just going to be limit ourselves with the structured data but we will also covering the json xml or some parquet data we will be playing with that we will be like cleaning and we will be using that data for your reporting so for that we need to do some kind of a, like a data cleansing and we're going to convert into a readable format so the snowflake features you can say multi-cluster shared data architecture we have data sharing, zero copy clone, near zero maintenance, we have result caching, parallel computing, automatic partitioning and time travel and fail safe. And we can say that, okay, the snowflake can take care of everything. So I do not need to worry about the performance up to one extent. When I say up to one extent, because snowflake still give us a lot of flexibility and a lot of features to improve our uh, query performance that we will be discussing in the upcoming lectures. Okay, and if you are still in this video, then I'm sure you would be very interested and you would be liking it up by the end of this course. So now the next we have the Snowflake architecture, which we will be learning into my next video. So in the next lecture, we will be focusing on the Snowflake architecture, how the query execution flow, the all three layers. And then next we're going to talk about the query execution flow. So all three layers which layer will come in the picture when I log in, how I'm going to set up my virtual warehouse and this data storage, where exactly this data will get stored, how exactly this virtual warehouse will be created, what would be the size of this virtual warehouse, how would I know it? Everything will be covered in the next topics. Okay, so for this, I'm going to stop.